actually my, my third time inside. Uh, I drive up from Medford every now and again when I have some time. I'm like close enough to come every now and again, but not close enough to come like once a week, you know, the way I would like other stores. I like that there's not a lot of confusion in the sense that it's like pretty much if you if you want to come in here and look for comics, like no one's gonna bother you and. Um, you're not gonna bump into anybody, and the inventory is really good. Like you could, you could do like a really quick pass in like 15 minutes, or you could like I'm doing now. You know, take as much time as you want, and you know, do like a an hour or two hours or whatever. And you never know what you'll find. That's good too. Like the boxes aren't cherry picked. A lot of stores now, like they'll sort out their first appearances or their really like key issues and. Um, I'm not saying you'll find like an Amazing Fantasy 15 in here, but it, it's really cool to find, you know, like some Neil Adams covers or some, you know, um, some decent first appearances. Uh, I like that a lot. This is just an example of something cool and unexpected that like I keep an eye out for, but like this is Star Wars issue 41. It's the first appearance in Comics of Yoda. It's got a really cool um, Millennium Falcon cover, and like I I'm not trying to complete a Star Wars run, but I just think that's really cool and stuff like that is what you find in these bins. I like when an owner maybe doesn't have necessarily like huge knowledge of comics but like knows his inventory. So what I don't like is when you go into a store and nothing's priced and then you bring it up to the counter and then this, the owner will either like price it in front of you by going to eBay or like use the guide. Um, I'm not saying it's, it's bad to do either of those things but I don't think it's right to do that like as the customer is uh, picking stuff up. And, um, like, that doesn't happen here. Everything's clearly marked. Um, I, I think the prices are really fair, too, actually. Um, yeah, but, like, it's actually becoming more and more a thing now for stores to just look stuff up on eBay because, you know, prices change all the time. And um, it's definitely appreciated when, you know, stores take the time to price their inventory. That was one of the things I hated about as a collector, too. Yeah. Going into a shop and... Nothing was marked. I went to a store nearby where I live, and um, he hadn't priced any of his back issues. He didn't have, like, it was all, like, modern stuff, like, stuff that come out in the last year. He had, like, some really, really, really good stuff, though. And, like, I have, like, a stack of books like this, like, next to me while I'm flipping, and he takes them, and he takes them behind the counter, and he starts pricing them on eBay. I just walked out of the store. The only time I'm pricing stuff up is if, obviously, I'm letting someone go through a couple boxes that I haven't priced up yet. Yeah. You know, it's like, hey... Oh, I just got this stuff in. I haven't priced it, but if you want it, you're more than welcome to look at it. But I have to price. I have to go and price it up. You yeah, know. It's yeah. I actually grew up um, reading uh, or, or looking at art by uh, John Romita Jr. I'm a huge John Romita Jr. fan. I actually, I got to meet him at uh, Boston Comic Con this year. <laughs> He's one of my least favorite artists now. I think his older stuff was better. His newer stuff now just seems kind of, I don't know, kind of lazy. But I hate bashing John Romita Jr. Because, I mean, if you watched our first documentary, there was a whole section of John, about John Romita Jr. From what I hear, he's the nicest guy in comic books. So oh, I, I, so I, nice. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to trash on him, but yeah, I'm not a big... I, I don't I, look forward to seeing his art in books anymore. You I, know? Think, I think the way around it is just to say, like, modern books just aren't... I mean, people feel strongly about that, too, but I, I feel like if, if you're looking for a fix on modern books, you, you're going to struggle to get it. I even think some of it has to do with... I've always said some of it has to do with the paper. Um, I like on the on the older paper where the colors the colors and stuff more sunk into the page than the glossy stuff that we have now. I thought his artwork looked better on that than it does on, on, the, on, the, glossy, on the glossy paper. Yeah, you know, yeah. So The first comic I ever bought was like a Peter Parker Spider-Man 34. And it's got Spider-Man and Iceman on a cover, and they're, like, drilling into a sewer. And, uh, like, ever since then, I, I really respected his stuff. And then, like, I learned later on that there were some, like, relatively early issues of Spider-Man that Romita Jr. did. Like, um, he did the first Hobgoblin, which mm -hmm. is a great cover. I honestly wish I had more knowledge of artists, uh, to be quite honest, because, um, you know, like, they don't, a lot of them don't get the credit they deserve. Adam Hughes and J. Scott Campbell are famous because they draw hot girls, and... I don't know. The uh, the guy who uh, uh, Roberto Ramos has done a lot of Spider Man, and like I like I almost take offense to his artwork. I, I don't I don't like his artwork like, at all. Well, it's funny though. Artwork. They had.
They've had some other people that were doing Spider-Man that was so bad that when Roberto Ramos came back, I was happy to see him. That's how bad the outwork was be yeah. before his art. But no, I don't. I see Roberto Ramos on a. I see him on the title. I'm already not looking forward to reading to reading the book. Yeah. It better be a sensational story, or I can't. I can't read. I can't read any of it. I don't want to see his artwork in Spider-Man or Captain America. I don't want to see him draw Superman. I didn't like really realize how much I disliked his art. And I feel bad trashing him too, you know, because he, he does put his heart and soul into it. But when I really, when I first realized I disliked his work was when um, I, there was this, um, I think it was like an Avengers number three. No, 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 it was a Superior Spider-Man book. I think you actually have it in your bins. But he drew, like, Wolverine's on the cover, and he drew Wolverine's face. It looks like he's like a potato head. I trash on that. I don't like it. But yeah. I'll still give them all credit. They can still do it better than what I can do. Yeah. I can't. I can't draw. I, I, I'm, I am not an artist. I can't draw. So, um, yeah, they're still they're still doing it better than than I can do it. But that's, that's true. But I'd still rather not see them doing it. Uh, a friend of mine, he uh, he has that same sentiment. He says, "I can't draw blood. I'll faint." Yeah. <laughs> I can't draw anything. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. Nope. I can't. I'm. I can't draw. But <clears throat> I. I mean, we still can have a, an opinion on what we like to look at. And, yes. Yeah. And Roberto Ramos stuff is something I don't like to look at. You know, getting Ramos, that's like having a, you know, your top artist in the in the history of comics coming coming back in, because that guy is awful. He was doing Avengers just a little while ago. Oh, okay. Um, it's got to be the worst artwork, some of the worst artwork ever. I really? mean, yeah. where where Ramos, you, you, I mean, you'd be wishing Ramos did every co every comic you ever read if if that guy if that guy was the, the artist. That bad, huh? Yeah, yeah, he is awful. I think most of the stuff that DC's put out in like the last ten years has been quality but i will say like and this is true of marvel too like i'm really tired of all the reboots and like i don't know i'm i'm i will say like for rebirth i'm i'm really excited to see what they do with the watchmen and how they tie them all into i don't know if that's a spoiler for people so i'm sorry but um i am very like i i don't know i i let's put it this way i think dc stuff for the most part in like the last decade or so has been quality um, especially for like the big titles, especially Batman, it's really hard to argue against that, um, and then Suicide Squad as well. But um, I'm just not a big fan of all the rebooting and all the rehashing. Um, at the very least, they've got good artists and and good writers to help them along the way. Of early earlier stuff and low to mid grade so you know nothing nothing mint so nothing here you know nothing here that are hundred dollar hundred dollar books but you know anywhere between you know so far we've been 15 20 25 25 dollars these turn into this series did we just pull those off to yeah, that turned in, that ended up turning into that, because Venom, Venom Space Knight came out before that series, uh -huh. and then that series yeah turned into that's when they started the renumbering issue at the end. Yeah, at issue one fifty. Yeah, okay. I just saw a ton of uh, Venom back issues yesterday. Oh, Wednesday. The first appearance of Manchester Black here, like anyone cares. <laughs> Some idiot on the internet will allow. Everybody who's rumored to possibly be in an upcoming movie. Could, yeah, uh, their their comics suddenly shoot up in price. Yeah, because the Facebook group says you need to read this and you need to buy this. I was like, yeah, I gotta go buy it. And then they trade amongst each other, and it looks like that there's actually a lot of trading going on. Look at this, 1980 something. Nice cover. 1981. We just send in a coupon and try it. Yeah, let's try it. We'll call it that place. Forty bucks for Iron Man number one at that time. Iron Man 55, four dollars and fifty cents in 1981. Mm. Machine. Now that thing's going for a few grand. Kind of crazy. It kind of looks like the uh, what is uh, what is that? What is the beer commercial? The captain, you know. Captain Morgan. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, I am Magneto. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. What the fuck is wrong with you, dude? Why are you standing like that? Why yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what he's. I don't know what he's trying to show there. I can't stand the X-Men, but I don't get any desire or any any satisfaction when I'm pricing this shit up. It's just the same so story cycle over and over and over again. Oh. 
Yeah, yeah. So we're, I mean, I don't get any satisfaction. We're persecuted because we're different, but we want to help you. Why do you hate us? We hate you because all you do is whine. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. We, we, that's that, that's you the reason. All cry about everything. <laughs> yeah. I thought that was probably the best X Men series that they did was that was that X Men animated X Men ninety two I think I think came out ninety two. Yep, I like that I like that a lot. But I mean overall, um, I wasn't a big X Men fan as a kid, and I mean I'd, I'd read X Men on and off. I still read it on and off now. You get a good you get a good you get a good story here and there, but overall, can't you just can't stick with it. Yeah, it's the same same thing, just whining and crying. Then something brilliant happens, and then it's back to, oh, woe is me, the world hates us. Yeah, well, we do. So, disappear. Well, now I don't want it to disappear. I sell a lot of comics. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Colossus, he cries in They're every the episode. Dogs. The guy is a walking giant metal monster. They, on purpose, they did it because they want you to show that he's just a sensitive soul inside. Yeah. Even though he's big and tough on the outside, he's just so sensitive, and he's hurting on the inside. Yeah, well, eventually you get sick of listening to him. Yeah. There's a lot of things I like in movies that I don't like their comics or, you know, even a book, or their, you know, a, a, a book or whatever, yeah. but I, I like, I like it in movies as a different medium. Yeah. So when they do, when they were, when they were doing the X-Men, I was, I was stoked for it. It was, uh, um, just, just for the fact that they were doing, I mean, doing more comic movies, um, and X-Men probably being one of the most popular groups, one of the most popular comics, it was, uh, it was, it was great to see them to do it. And, um, I enjoyed them. Three got a bad rap or whatever. I didn't mind it when they started doing the first class. After that, I like those even better than the than the original than the original three. Fucking a! But I'm usually not psyched when I see that they're coming out with a new X Men title. It's like, oh great, just what we need is 15 more, you know, 15 X Men titles. What are you saying? That's a nice customer customer service. Yeah, customer service. Yeah. And let me let me comment on how nice your shirt is yeah. too. Let me comment on that. <laughs> I don't I don't know why I got because you were gonna say something snarky. I actually think. He makes a pink shirt. I myself can't. I don't look good in a pink shirt. I, I look like a giant, a, a giant marshmallow. <laughs> you know, it's uh, giant Pete. yeah, giant that Pete. Has you know, nothing to do with the shirt. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> nothing. Oh. So I got good read. Uh, I'm like uh, ten issues behind, so I'm just saying that for the artwork, I guess. But I did enjoy reading it for, for quite a while. Uh, now life gets busy. So I just, I really come here for Glenn. Throw him, throw him, a, throw him a few dollars here and there, you know. Yeah, and then we, you know, then we, and then great conversation. Great conversation, yeah. <laughs> yep, yep. Give me the finger. You get to flip him off. Yeah, yeah. yeah. One of the, um, one of my customers went down to Rhode Island for whatever Grand Prix thing that they had, I don't know, a few months ago for Magic. And, um... He was like, yeah. He goes, he goes. The only thing that I, he goes, the only thing that I can't that that I can't stand about going with these things is that they don't make nose plugs the to smell. totally yeah. to go get rid of the smell. Oh, he yeah. goes, he goes. Now I get three thousand people there. He goes, with twenty five hundred from didn't bathe. You know, it's. Uh, yeah. He goes, he goes. I don't. He goes, I don't get it. It's um, take a shower before you get, before you come into the, you know come into the place. Basically or, necessity. Yeah. I used to go down to uh, Atlanta to go to Dragon Con, <laughs> and uh, phenomenal con convention, great party. Right, uh, a lot of people, a lot of cosplay, a lot of hot chicks, sweet. But uh, they'd have uh, Dragon Con TV, so there's all these uh, smart TVs out there, and they they do commercials and stuff around the, the con. And one of the commercials was remember to bathe. Yeah. I mean, if you have to be reminded. <laughs> yeah. To bathe, yeah. Just, it was very, just a friendly very reminder, rocky. kid. Yeah. Right, exactly. Yeah. Soap is your friend. Pack your old yeah. spice. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Take a bath. Yeah. Take a bath. Yeah. Take this. Yeah, how bad, yeah. how pathetic is that? Where you have to have an, a commercial, a complimentary speech stick on your way yeah. in, you know? Like, hey, <laughs> that's right. It's you know, your hotel, it's it's your, exactly. Your you hotel know, actually, body spray, your hotel you actually need. gives you soap and stuff <laughs> for free. You don't have to pay for it. It's it's gratis. Yeah. Right, yeah, yeah. It's it's in the it's in your room. <laughs> Use it. No, yeah. no, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> All right, gents. Peace out. All right, we'll see you later, John. Thank you. He'll be handing out soap and deodorant. Yeah, you know what do? It feels like when Trump was throwing. So we'll throw a little bars of paper towels. Travel so soap. Put, throw the paper towels, and when he was in Puerto Rico for the for the storm. Yeah, yeah, he'd yeah. He'd be there on top talking comics and be like, "Here's your deodorant. Yeah, here's your, here's your, your soap. Body yeah. spray." As a matter of fact, we'll we will get someone to label Comic Book Palace deodorant, and yeah. we'll just and we'll just toss it out. We'll just toss it out. <laughs> we're gonna give it to. We're gonna get the smell of an old comic book. <laughs> so you post about uh, Mr. Miracle. Yeah. You're excited about that one. I was right? excited, <laughs> but. 
Rand said it was his Rand was it? said it was his favorite issue of 2017. Well, we looked through it in the at the back of the store. Read it though. It went blah 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 blah. <laughs> words. Yeah. Boredom. 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 Oh, words. Wow. Tom King blows. What? I just put a, we just put a bunch of shit on the wall too, and we just added a bunch of stuff into the back of all early 200 x er, uh, early 100s, uh, the Death Phoenix Saga stuff, and then no, we got some of the good 200 stuff. A lot of stuff rising in the movie. No, I mean I think it's still about the same. Always been about the same. Yeah. Well, the Death of the Phoenix stuff. Um, that rose a little. That, that rose a little. Yeah, but they did. Well, the Dark Phoenix already came out. I know it was the Days of Future Past. That stuff was. Yeah. That stuff was ro- ro- rose a little. What Dark Phoenix is due out sometime next year or this year? Is it? I don't. Yeah. You know. It's gonna suck. How can, how yeah, can you? Already, I mean, how can you say that? You don't. You don't. You know nothing about it. It's gonna suck. Where, where, where does that X-Men, come all from? All X-Men movies, the exception of the second one, sucked. I hasn't even seen a trailer for it. Yeah. It's gonna suck. Yeah. It's gonna suck. Probably even haven't started filming it yet. That's, well, that's, that's a suck. problem. That's a problem with comic fans too. With movies, that's just gonna suck. Mm. They, they're, they're everyone's negative. The worst movie ever. But I, I went anyway. So I went three times, so I could figure out more things to complain about for it. Or you hear the people that come in. The movie's gonna suck, and they come in too. They say, "Hey, I saw this. I saw the the new whatever whatever Marvel or DC movie that came out. Yeah, I didn't like it. Well, you said it was gonna suck before you went to see it. Yeah, then why'd you go see it? Why, why'd you pay your money and go see it? Why didn't you wait until it came on Netflix or whatever and, and watch it? You know, it's, uh, well, I knew it was going to suck. Oh, so you, so you just took $15 and just threw it away. Oh, it was the matinee. Only paid eight. Oh, yeah, there you go. So they threw away $8. <laughs> Episode ever.